Sinuous Saga Hellblade 2 is Ninja Theory and Xbox Game Studios' most recent release. Uh, pretty highly anticipated. Uh, the first game um, was it was kind of like a cult classic, I, I think. Um, and it lived kind of a weird life. It began as a third-party PlayStation exclusive. Uh, then Ninja Theory got bought up by Xbox. It became a multi-platform game. And it's one of those games that I don't think had great financial success, or at least not in the tens of millions. Uh, but its critical reception was really good. Um, due in part in a big way because of its kind of unique uh, way of storytelling. Um, it, it had this uh, now famous thing of having the Furies or these voices in the main character's head who's uh, dealing with like active ongoing psychosis uh, and the way that they presented this uh, kind of 3D audio. Uh, and in the first game, there was a lot of moments of you know, these, these voices being presented all around your head uh, would actually warn you about things happening in combat and things like that. And it was really neat, um, as well as the, you know, I think pretty good story uh, and really, really good graphics for the time uh, and coming from a studio that at the time was small and it still is. Uh, and, you know, it, it's, 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 again, it's one of those games that uh, it's like a critical darling probably wasn't the most successful financially, but you know, that, that didn't matter, uh, at least not to the point of Xbox wanting to acquire, uh, this developer doing it and then allowing them to make a, a true sequel, uh, to that game. And, and that's what we're talking about today. So, um, my initial impressions of Hellblade two, uh, were kind of interesting. I, uh, it, it's a short game. Uh, I, I believe I beat it in around, I want to say seven hours or so. And, um, the first few hours I played kind of throughout the work day, uh, I, I have a lot going on right now with work. So, you know, the first thing in the morning before I worked, uh, I, I played a couple hours uh, and then around lunchtime, I played a little bit more. Um, and then I actually finished the game in a pretty long session uh, after uh, my daughter went to bed and uh, uh, the, the evening uh, that the game released. Um, what was interesting was uh, playing it for a few hours, watching and reading a bunch of reviews and seeing the Metacritic score and the critical reception, uh, and, and then finishing the game because um, the first couple hours are great. There's a really interesting opening. Uh, it does pick up almost right after the events of the first game. Um, you know, Senua, uh, if, you, if, if you know the story of the first game, uh, is basically going to Iceland um, or, or wherever. I don't, I, they, they never actually name it Iceland, but that's where it seems to take place. And uh, to, to go stop the slavers, uh, to, to stop the, the, the people who are going around to the, the surrounding areas to, to steal people for, for their own purposes, which we learn more about in the game. Um, this will be a spoiler-free review for the most part. And uh, graphically, it, it jumps right out at, at you. It's it's uh, you know it looks amazing. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Um, but what was interesting for me was those first couple hours are impressive in a lot of ways, and then we're kind of just on par in other, and, and you know, and 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 in the remaining ways, right? So if you'd played the first game and you were kind of expecting them to jump right out and be like whole new experience, deeper everything, which we'll get in more detail about. Um, that, that's not what you got. And honestly, in the first couple hours, I was hearing out a lot of the criticisms um, of the game, not taking things uh, far enough, of not advancing the game enough. At one point, I was hoping Hellblade uh, 2 was going to be like Xbox's God of War. Now, I think they actually did a decent job in the last couple months and even the year or two of trying to make it clear to people uh, to the point of explicitly saying this is going to be a short game. It's around the length of the first one, which was fairly short as well. Uh, we are, you know, the, this the Ninja Theory is making the game they want to make, and, and we're going to talk about that as well. And, you know, that this wasn't supposed to be this big 
triple a blockbuster in the sense of it being a 20 30 40 hour adventure across you know all these different timelines or 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 anything like that that that's not what it was uh but still i was kind of hearing out a lot of the criticisms of people saying like yeah it's pretty and uh yeah the audio is obviously great but but where's the more advanced like combat and story and puzzles and things like that i was hearing that out pretty hard then last night i rolled credits and i finished it and i'm confused i'm confused how there's so many people who are doing reviews that seem like they reviewed the 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 first half of the game that i was also feeling fairly critical about uh but the reviews just seem like the people none of them played the second half let me be clear the second half of the game doesn't necessarily bring all the combat mechanic uh, intricacies that maybe people wanted doesn't turn it into some super satisfying or challenging puzzle game. Uh, I'm not saying that Um, I'm saying that the, the presentation and the experience of the second half of the game, despite maybe some of those uh, negatives is just so good. It's just such a good experience uh, that I'm very confused about a lot of the reviews and podcasts and stuff that I've read or listened to because, you know, my conclusion that I put on Twitter and I'll explain it more is that I think the only way you come out of Hellblade 2 being kind of down on it and feeling like it didn't have a story you could connect to or care about, um, I, I think I think the only way you can feel that way really is if you didn't play it. Um, or if you got through the first couple hours and just kind of decided you were just going to finish the game and not let it show itself to you, right? Um, I think the first game, Hellblade 1, Sinua's Sacrifice, um, in general has like a better theme, I guess. Uh, the idea of Sinua uh, trying to get back her, her, you know, her significant other, uh, the, her love, Dillian, um, after he had been, you know, massacred essentially by these folks that she's going after now in the second game, I I think that overall was probably a better premise than what we get in this in the second game. Um, but I saw a lot of reviews and and chatter about how, you know, a lot of folks, you know, it, it's it's really going down the 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 path of, well, it's really pretty and it sounds good. And people seem like mixed on the story, either they liked it or they didn't. Um, but people are really hung up on, yeah, but the combat is no better or even a step back, as some people have said, uh, or, 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 or it's too short. And uh, I don't know. We'll get into all of that. But long story short, for me, the second half of this game was a huge redemption uh, to the first half, uh, where the first half I liked, but I was definitely feeling the like, eh, this just doesn't seem like it's advancing anything enough then picking up so much in the second half uh and and just really doing a lot of things i really enjoyed so let's get into the specifics um when it comes to graphics um i played mostly on pc i have a 4070 ti i have a uh, 5800x uh processor and 64 gigs of ddr4 ram um it I had to play on 1440p if I tried to play on uh, 4K, uh, even with DLSS and stuff like that. It, um, it it would only give me 30 frames, so I I knocked it down a little bit, uh, and and overall had a good experience, no major issues or anything like that uh, to really report. Um, I had to fiddle with it a little bit. I ended up just going to the default settings and playing most of the game on that because all of my little uh, tinkerings weren't working out well. Um, and on PC, uh, it just looks insane. It, it's, it is the most visually impressive game I've ever played in my entire life. It, it is that there's not even an argument, uh, in my opinion, <laughs> I, and nothing I've seen coming soon is, is going to be on this level either. Now that comes with the benefit of spending five years on a, you know, five to eight hour game, right? Um, I, I'm not going to pretend like that isn't a factor. Um, but what should also be considered is that Ninja Theory is still a small team. I believe there are a little over a hundred devs. 
and I believe they're also working on one, if not two other games right now. Um, and so, you know, the active developing, you know, resources on this was probably closer to, you know, maybe 70 or 80 people, uh, maybe a few more, which makes it just so impressive. And uh, it's an Unreal Engine 5 game. And you have to consider that when they started developing this game is when Unreal Engine 5 literally came out. Uh, and it's gone through quite a few iterations since then. And so I, I just from conversations I've had with other devs, uh, it, it's it's a thing of, you know, planning and, and, and executing making a new game on an engine that literally just came out even though it's based on you know really well-known previous uh you know architecture and i assume sinuous sacrifice is probably on unreal 4 uh, probably early in that generation as well um you know but with all that taken into account it, it just looks incredible on pc the the environment the characters the uh the animations are, are just insane which i consider part of graphics um just just impressive uh from top to bottom in my opinion it just just so insane to the point where like i took so many screenshots and, but i don't want to post so many of them because they're a little spoilery um but like even in motion it's there's so many like photorealistic moments uh, but especially when you stop the game and take pictures, it's just, it's crazy. It, it's wild. Um, I played a little bit. I just kind of dabbled on X, Xbox Series X. Um, obviously, if you're a uh, if you're a frame queen and you can only play at 60 frames or higher, um, it's it's not great. It is 30, uh, and from what I experienced, it seems like a pretty solid 30 frames. Um, but the actual graphics and the fidelity still look amazing on series X. And I think that if that's the, you know, the best hardware you have, you're still going to have a really good experience. Um, and I, I assume that they have it set up to where when you stop the game to take screenshots, it kind of boosts up the, some of the resolution and stuff. And so you should be able to get some really pretty screenshots. And I even saw multiple people reference the series S uh, as kind of the underdog uh, hardware for this game. And that obviously it's showing it at the lower resolutions and it's only at 30 frames, but that for what it is, I, I saw actually some really positive feedback on how the Series S is. I don't have one, I haven't played it myself, so don't take my word for it, but it may not be the worst. But yeah, the graphics of this game, top tier, in my opinion, the best graphics I've ever seen from a video game ever. Um, and this is definitely probably the primary way that Sinua's Saga is going to kind of uh, make its name in the future. And that if people are smart, at least in my opinion, uh, it's this is going to be the game to compare others to graphically for probably quite a while. Because I don't think there's going to be many other games that are going to try to do what this game did when it comes to length and things like that. So graphics super good um audio uh, i'll start with the furies that was one of the big features of the first game was the voices in your head who kind of they, they use that like kind of 3d audio system to if you're wearing headphones to make it sound like they're all around you um the game even recommends you play with headphones on um i played with in stereo a bit as well and it still tries to do the effect right um but it's uh it's it's not quite as good so definitely play this game uh, with headphones um, the furies were really interesting um, d definitely I I thought leaning more in the like kind of deception and doubt uh, at different times but at the end of the day uh, the, the game really is just trying to uh, kind of you know reinforce Sinua's fears and hopes and things like that with, with these kind of voices playing in the background um, We'll talk about combat in a moment, but combat is different where in the first game, there were moments where you'd be fighting multiple enemies. And while you're engaging one enemy, um, another one could approach you from the side or from behind. And the Furies used to tell you about that. Uh, and it was kind of like a gameplay mechanic that doesn't happen in this game, uh, at least not in the same way. And so the Furies are pretty much just cosmetic in this game. They're supposed to add to the story uh, and to kind of the the context and the atmosphere, uh, but they you know don't don't play as important of a combat role uh, as they did before. Uh, the voice acting in general, um, the voice actress and I believe the physical actress for Senua, 
Um, I, I always mess up her name, so uh, I, I will advise you to look at their credits uh, to, to see uh, who she is exactly. They have lots of um, uh, kind of documentary type footage as well of the development of this game where they talk to her a lot. And she's uh, really, really great, and she should win every voice, uh, you know, lead uh, performance, whatever uh, game award the next in the next year. It's um, just really, really, really good. Um, as it, she was in the first game, even though I think that was her first performance, which is kind of crazy in hindsight. Um, yeah, she's stand out just so good. The um, the the tech they use with Unreal Engine Five uh, to to capture facial animations and emotions and just man, it's just so good. Um, you know, humans are so in tune with people's uh, emotions and how they uh, express things with their faces where uh, our brains are very highly, highly developed to read people's body language, especially in their face. And um, in this game really taps into that. Uh, and it's, it's, you know, just like the graphics, um, you know, very good at that. Uh, and the voice acting just complements that so much. It's, it's very, very good from the lead. Um, and I thought all the supporter supporting kind of actors as well were great. We're very convincing, um, both in good and bad ways, uh, even to the point of like the barks and stuff from the NPCs during combat and stuff like that are, are pretty good. Um, going back to the Furies for a moment, the one thing I did notice is that uh, I thought I was getting really annoyed with how much they were repeating themselves in combat only for me to realize by the end of the game, I wasn't uh, doing combat mechanics correctly. Um, I wasn't executing things the way I was supposed to. So combat encounters were going way longer than they had to, uh, especially at the end of the game. Um, and so they were repeating themselves, but it was because uh, they seemingly never anticipated someone being so bad at their game or being so ignorant to the mechanics that uh, it, it wasn't supposed to take as long as it did. Uh, so I don't fault them for that, really. Um, and then the final thing, the music with the audio is just so good. Um, mostly ambient music, mostly kind of in the background. There, there are a few moments of like, you know, obviously here's the soundtrack. Um, if you watch the game awards in 2023, there was a live performance by one of the like kind of, um, classic Icelandic, uh, Nordic kind of, uh, singing groups and, uh, with like the throat singing and all that. Um, and there's a couple moments in this game where, um, they, they do transitions really interesting where they, they skip time and location by basically just like having the scene happen, pulling the camera out to this big wide angle of the, um, of the, of Iceland and then kind of zooming into a, a the, wherever, you know, the, the next part of the story is going to take place. Um, and during those moments they, they have the soundtrack play and, and that song from the game awards and like multiple times I got goosebumps. It was just really, really cool. Um, and, and there's a few moments where like there's one moment without spoiling anything where you walk into this really uh, unique environment compared to the rest of the game and the soundtrack gets going and it's just this like, oh, like this like very overwhelming feeling. Um, it was it was very cool. So, um, yeah, audio, uh, as expected, uh, was was fantastic in this game. Um, so now I'll probably get into some of the more controversial issues, uh, the gameplay. Uh, so we'll talk about combat first and then puzzles. Uh, the combat is, is an interesting one. Um, if you've seen the feedback and things like that, you'll, you'll see that uh, for the most part, it seems like people feel the combat is just kind of the same as the first game. Um, and even to the point of regressing uh, in some capacity. So when, when I've seen the comments about regression and the combat mechanic, what I'm assuming they're talking about is what I mentioned before, where, uh, in the first game you would face off with multiple foes. And while you were engaging with one, it was possible for the other ones to actively attack you. Um, so you could be in the middle of a combo on one of the NPCs and then another one would just blindside you and, and take you out. Uh, and like I said before, one of the cool features there was that the Furies or the voices in your head would say behind you, watch out Senua. And, and it was kind of like, that was, that was really cool. It was really interesting. So in Hellblade 2, that doesn't happen. And it's because 
the way that they've made the combat is it's always one-on-one. -on -one. Now, there's definitely sequences, especially in the second half of the game, where you'll be facing off with one foe, and another one will, like, interrupt them, and, and then you'll take over fighting them, and then you'll return to the other person. But you don't have any control over that, or at least not as far as I could tell. Um, that said, what, what I think is interesting about that point and that being put out as a negative uh, is that I remember from my own experience playing the first game and from the reception of the game back in the day is that there were people who didn't like that, who didn't like the way the co that combat was. Uh, and so what's really interesting is um, the game is being derided in some capacity for regressing when it comes to combat, say, uh, for... Uh, you know, maybe not doing things that people thought they were going to. Uh, but but my take on it from, from the feedback of my own uh, experience and others is it sounds like they did that because people didn't like it. They were trying to improve it. Um, but it's one of those things that, uh, you know, they, they even if you didn't like a thing, they took it away. Now you don't like it. Um, I, I don't know if that's true for everyone, but um, I, I do think that point is kind of interesting. When it comes to the actual combat itself, it's fairly sparse. Uh, it's you know this isn't God of War. This isn't uh, even though it seems like some reviewers thought it was going to be. Um, it, the, the combat encounters are pretty minimal, um, but I would say that they um, are still were still really good. Um, if you weren't looking for the most complicated thing ever, right? Uh, it's, you know, you have four controls, basically. You, you can dodge, uh, you can parry or block, uh, you can uh, do a heavy attack and a light, like, fast attack. Um, and again, like, if the entire game, say it was a Devil May Cry game, and you spent the entire game fighting for you know 95% of the game, I would have been, you know, completely unsatisfied with the combat. Like it, it wouldn't have been fun to do for seven straight hours, right? But all in all, there's like maybe an hour of combat if you put all of the experiences together, and that might even be exaggerating. Um, and, and I think f for that, um, it's fine. And even to the point where Maybe the actual combat mechanics aren't complicated enough. Maybe they aren't what people expected. But again, going back to the graphics and all that, the the visuals of the combat are really, really good, in my opinion. The animations are even better. I remember they said that they recorded all of the combat animations for the first game, I think in like a day. Uh, and, and like one of their friends, like photograph studios, uh, and then this game, one of the big things about their acquisition by Microsoft and Xbox was that they, they like made a, like a custom, uh, uh stage for, uh, animation capture and, and it shows, uh, I think they said that they spent, was it like 70 days or something on combat animation capture? Uh, if I remember correctly, like it was some crazy number. And, and it shows like the, and like the animations are so good. They're so meaty. The sound design is so good when you make contact or you get blocked and you know, you have, you have a sword on sword hit, uh, or you know, the shields or even the, the thrown axes and the spears and, you know, all of the, all of that part of combat is, is really, really good. And it's very much, um, made to feel more visceral and, and, and made to have more depth, um, by the visual and audio design, where maybe it does lack in the in actual fighting mechanics, but I never found myself being unhappy with, with the combat. I did play in the dynamic challenging mode, so I assume the more competent you were through the game, the harder it made it. Um, so I am actually kind of curious to play the game on like set difficulty modes to see how much easier or harder it would have been. Um, but yeah, the, the combat is one of those things that is probably the thing I've seen dogged on the most uh, and that's, and that's fine because it probably is the worst part of the game, but I still think it's good. So that's my take. Um, when it comes to the puzzles, um, I found them to be, you know, just interesting and complicated enough to make me stop and think for a second, but not to the point of being like frustrated or, or really challenged. I, um, with the combat and the puzzles, I've seen some commentary about like, you know, if you're not going to make this, uh, uh, 
a more uh, mechanically deep part of the game, uh, if this is basically just a way to delay between story moments, then why even have it? Um, why not make it more of like a telltale style game or something? Um, I, I, I get that sentiment. Um, but I think the the puzzles and the combat were, were, were just fine and that they were nice kind of interludes in between the other moments. And, um, you know, while, while neither one of them, uh, are, are going to push anything forward the way I think the visuals and even the audio of this game, um, ha- are going to push things forward for gaming. Um, you know, the gameplay didn't. But I still think it's like good. Like if I had to give the gameplay a score out of ten on its own, it'd be like a seven five. Like, yeah, you know, didn't do anything really crazy new, didn't challenge any you know norms or anything, but it was still satisfying. At least that's my take. Moving on to the story, um, I I really liked it. It's like I said before. I I think that it, it was going to be hard for them to follow up the first game. Because the the story of the first game, uh, which, like I said before, is Sinua going to this place to try to bring Dillian, her her lover, back from the dead after he was, uh, you know, eviscerated by uh, the, these slavers and um, the, these these beings that that destroyed her village. Um, you know, that was going to be hard to beat. You know, it, it's hard to beat a uh, a love story like that and trying to you know find redemption for uh someone that you love who was you know hurt or killed right but i still think the story of this is good so i without any spoilers the whole idea is that after the events of the first game where she comes to terms with dillian's death where she um kind of accepts uh her her psychosis uh and, and and tries to to learn to live with it instead of fighting it necessarily um, despite all of the awful things that it's uh, brought on to her. Um, this second game is her basically promising Dillian that she would uh, stop the slavers or stop these people who had hurt her family and, and her people so badly to stop them from doing what they had done to them. And so she goes to Iceland or to this new place uh, to, to stop them. And and at the end of the day, that is the story. Um, they it, it, it gets more complicated more things happen than that. Uh, and, and for the sake of not spoiling anything, I won't get more into that, but in general, like I said before, I felt like things moved a little slow in the first two or three hours of the game. Um, and then I felt like they just really picked up and, and became really, really exciting and fun. Uh, and, and I, while I, was fine with the first half of my experience and it felt like more Hellblade. Um, the second half I thought really stepped it up and I thought was extremely good. I really, really enjoyed it. So, um, you know, this being another one of the kind of contentious points about the game, uh, is interesting to me because, um, again, I understand most of the criticism from the first half of the game, but I, I just really am struggling to see why people seem so put off by or so uncaring about the second half of the game. Um, at the very least, if you wanted uh, a more of a God of War action type game, the second half, I think definitely brings that more to the table. Um, but then I also thought just the story and the happenings in the second half in general were just, were really nice, not to the point of that, like redemption arc of Dillion and her, but still, I thought it was really good and I enjoyed the way things end. I enjoyed the way things are set up for the future as well. So, um, I don't know. That one's an interesting one for me. Uh, so getting away from all of that and more into the critical reception of the game, um, kind of, I, I, you know, read multiple reviews that the, the reviews that basically range from like the seven to nine, I can appreciate, um, people giving it a 10 out of 10, I think after actually finishing the game, I could see where a reviewer could be so moved or so into the second half of the game, especially, or just so impressed by the graphics that they could give it like a nine, five or a 10. Um, but then the, the, the reviews that were given it, like there was like fives and even sixes out of tens, obviously everyone is entitled to their own opinion. Um, 
but I, I think that's like, I think it's tough to give it that low of a rating. Um, there was one specifically that somehow was on Metacritic that gave it uh, like a 45 out of 100. And it basically, and, and many of the really negative reviews were more about like Xbox uh, or more about this game existing at all. Um, and not really about the game. It was really strange. The PC Gamer review, which, you know, I they they're they have an interesting track record when it comes to reviewing anything to do with Xbox. Um, but that like that review in particular, uh, it seemed like the writer generally liked the game, but it seemed like they just didn't think that Sinua's saga was necessary. And so they gave it a bad score. It was really strange. Um, but for the most part, the like sevens, eights and nines are the ones I kind of felt like were more, uh, you know, on point and kind of, deserving for this game where I think it's around an 81 or an 82 Metacritic score, uh, which is good. It's just not great. Right. Um, the, the one, uh, podcast that I really thought was interesting was the kind of funny game cast where they, they did a actual review, you know, a full review between four people. And two of the people were, um, uh, Greg, uh, from kind of funny, um, and blessing idea junior, um, who were the former PSI Love You, you know, PlayStation podcasters for their channel. Uh, and then the other two were Paris Lily and Mike Howard or Snowbike Mike, who were the X cast or the Xbox podcasters uh, for their channel before they kind of consolidated shows. And what was really interesting is that um, Greg and is Greg Miller and Blessing gave it a six, five out of 10. Um, and uh, Paris gave it an eight and Mike gave it a nine out of 10. And what was interesting about the criticisms, uh, I listened to this podcast when I was only a couple hours into the game. And even though I was enjoying it more than it seems like Greg or Blessing did, um, the things they were saying were like, I was like, oh, yeah, sure. Like, I can get that, like, about the story and, and, and the combat and the puzzles and stuff. Um, but now after finishing the game, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. <laughs> like, the, the things that they were saying about just not caring about the story, not caring about the characters, not being compelled or anything by, you know, the events of the game. Like, I, I just don't get it. I, I, don't, I don't get how. And that's not my job. You know, they're allowed to have other opinions. Um, but it is one of those things where it's like, it, it just feels like if you got through, especially the second half of that game, and still felt that way that maybe it just didn't grab you, but it also kind of feels like maybe you were kind of thrown off or put off by the first half of the game and then maybe didn't allow the second one to, to re grab you. Um, and you know, if, if a game loses you in the first half, you know, it's not your job to let it pick you back up. Um, but it, it, it's just, it was really, it was a good experience for me to read and hear a bunch of these reviews while I was in the middle of the game, kind of in between, the, the maybe the slower, less interesting first half and the what I found to be very interesting second half uh, and to kind of be able to to take uh, the other opinions where maybe I kind of agreed with them for the first half and vehemently disagree with them in the second. Um, I, I think that was good for me and uh, coming to the conclusions I've come to uh, for this game. Um, with, with the conversation as well, length has been a big part of it. There's people coming out saying that they finished the game in as little as like four and a half hours. Um, I, again, like I felt like I buzzed through the game pretty quick and I believe I was around seven hours. I, I guess like there's probably ways that if you, I, I don't know how people are getting it that fast because it's a very linear game. Like you, you are basically just following the path through the entire experience. And so uh, I guess maybe if you completely like just sprint from point to point, do every combat encounter perfectly, do every puzzle without even thinking about it, I guess you could beat the game in maybe five, five and a half hours. Um, but kind of what I said before the game even came out and even how I feel about it now is, you know, with the first game, which was a similar length, I didn't finish the first game and think, oh man, that was too short. I finished the first game. I was like, wow, that was a great experience. And that's exactly what happened to me here. So um, there is also a new game plus where the, the main narrator in, in the main game gets replaced by other people. If you do a, another playthrough, you can choose for that. And then if you collect enough of the, 
uh, collectibles in the game, it looks like there's actually a third voiceover option for when you play through. And since it's a relatively short game, um, I definitely plan on playing through it the second time to get the set of voices you get by completing the game. And then I really want to collect all of these collectibles and see what this third one is and play through it with that as well. Because, uh, you know, I, I won't do I Maybe I'll do a spoiler cast another time. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of things that get called into question in this game. And I think hearing other narrators uh, during the game will be really interesting to kind of develop what I think about, uh, you know, the you know how what actually happened here. Um, another big part of the general conversation is like, you know, I, I've seen a lot of people being kind of almost uh, relenting to the idea of like, well, it's not about the gameplay. It's about the experience, which is how I felt in the first half of the game. Uh, and I was really buying into that whole idea of like, oh, come on, guys. Like, it's not God of War. You know, we're not looking, you know, this doesn't need to have really good combat or whatever. That's not why people come to this game. And again, it's another one of those things where at the end of the day, um, after finishing the game, while, yeah, the combat mechanics aren't any more complicated and even in some ways regressed a little, yeah, the puzzles aren't the most complicated thing in the world. Maybe the story didn't super connect with you. I just still refuse to believe that someone played the second half of this game and think that it's just like a, that it's just a, it's just a movie game. Like, I, I thought it was a really nice experience, but that's just my experience. Um, then we get into the Xbox tax conversations where there's been lots of posting about how, you know, people who love the first game uh, gave it like a 95 or whatever, like four or five years ago. Uh, and now they're giving it like a 50 or a 60. That stuff's tough. I mean, th things change. There's nothing wrong with people expecting more of this game than what it is. That's fine. I, I think my biggest issue with the scores and the presumed Xbox tax is that like, especially like in that kind of funny review where Greg and Blessing, uh, Greg even said at one point uh, when, when Mike Howard was kind of talking about how we don't celebrate Xbox games enough, uh, Greg said something to the point of like, well, they only improved two of the four big things about the game. You know, how do we celebrate that? Uh, I'm paraphrasing. And, and that stinks because I think it's really strange to pretend like if a game has like some of the best graphics that have ever been in a video game uh, and the audio is as good as it is. And if you like the story, you know, that part. So even if you didn't feel like the gameplay was good enough or didn't improve enough from the first game, uh, are, are we going to count the gameplay as 75% of our score and, and then give the game a five out of 10 or something? Or are we going to allow ourselves to say like, you know, the graphics are so good. This game deserves at least uh, this score. The audio is so good that it deserves at least this. The, you know, I, I just think it, it, it is interesting that, um, you know, I've talked a lot about it recently. I don't believe in Xbox tax is like this big grand conspiracy, but I do believe in, in it as like a perception issue. And I genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, believe if this game was a PlayStation exclusive, it would still get dogged for the things it's getting dogged for. And it would probably have a Metacritic score at least five points higher. I, I genuinely believe that. Um, uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change anything. Uh, and, you know, the Sony people are going to pop in and say, like, well, next year when it comes out on PlayStation 5, we'll see if that's true. And, and maybe we will. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I, I try not to dabble in that stuff too much. But it is getting harder and harder for me to pretend like there doesn't seem to be kind of like an implicit bias. Uh, but you know, we'll have to see, uh, maybe that's up to Xbox to change. Um, and then getting into my final thoughts, uh, for Xbox and game pass, what does this game mean? Um, I, I think for, uh, Xbox, this is going to be one of those things where, uh, kind of like hi-fi rush, uh, it's probably going to be seen as like a critical success. Um, I'll be curious how many this, how many copies this game sells, especially with a little bit of a lukewarm response from some of the more vocal people in the game media industry. Um, I, I think this is going to be a game that is going to have like a long burn, though, where you know this initial hype or whatever is going to go away, criticisms and all of that, and then people are just going to be like. That game's on Game Pass, or it's cheap. It's only fifty bucks, anyways, on PC, Steam, or whatever. Um, you know, it'll probably go on sale at some point. And I think in the long run, a lot of people will play this. And I think 
the future will be kind to this game. I, I think in the future, people are going to be like, yeah, maybe they didn't improve that other stuff, but man, that is just such a great experience and, and, and kind of where I'm sitting with it. Um, as for Ninja Theory and Hellblade, um, what the future of those are, um, it, there's been a lot of reporting kind of, there's a lot of anxiety, right? Uh, on the Xbox side of things, the fans like, you know, not wanting studios like Ninja Theory to go away. On the other side, it's almost this like concern trolling thing where they're like, oh, I hope Ninja Theory doesn't get closed because this game wasn't a 10 out of 10 uh, because of the Tango Gameworks closures and Arcane Austin. I, I just think that this Xbox game studio who just put out this darling, at least in multiple parts of the gaming industry um, is a lot different than these two struggling studios under uh, Bethesda Zenimax that were probably struggling before the purchase even happened. I think they're in very different situations. I really think that Ninja Theory appears to be kind of a like darling of Xbox. And I, I just don't think it's the same situation. I think Ninja Theory is fine. Supposedly they already have one or two games greenlit and they're still, they're working on, I think it's Project Mara was one of them. And then supposedly another game, um, and that leads into the conversation about Hellblade. What's the future of that? Without spoilers, I think they definitely imply a future for this uh, franchise and for Sinua, maybe. Um, I could see a, a Hellblade 3 one day. I think it would be cool if they got to do something else first, though. I think it would be cool if they got to make some other projects. And then maybe for like the next gen of consoles, we see them make a third game that maybe is that big God of War experience that people seem to have wanted. Uh, but maybe it won't be. Maybe this is the kind of game they make. Either way, I think Ninja Theory is secure and fine. And I think we will have a future of Hellblade in some capacity one day. Now to wrap up this 40 plus minute video, I will give my score. Um, I think I'm gonna score this an 8.5 out of 10. Um, I may be convinced to change it one day, but I think that's where I'm sitting. I'm, I, I, I'm so close to a nine. Um, if I got to even deeper scoring, I would do like an 8.75. But on my whole like idea of whether I would recommend games to people or not, I definitely recommend this game if the general premise around it uh, is something that you seem interested in. Um, if, if you're a little hesitant, wait for a sale or get it on Game Pass for a month and then cancel it. I, I don't care. Do whatever you want. But I do think people should play this game and experience it. Um, if you want to know why, then go back and watch the rest of my video if you skipped to the very end. <sighs> That's what I have for this one. Uh, if you like the video, please hit the like button. Uh, share it around. I would really appreciate it. Uh, if you want more stuff like this, more reviews, uh, news, and things like that, uh, hit the subscribe button and subscribe to the channel. Uh, and leave your comments down below with what you thought of Hellblade 2 if you played it. And if not, let me know why you aren't going to play it. Maybe I can convince you otherwise. If you really want to support my content, my podcast, my streams, consider becoming a YouTube member to get videos like this early and to uh, get a little cool icon beside your name when you comment and some other perks. That is all I have for this one. So until next time.